So welcome back. We're going to actually have a little fun in this episode, but it's ultimately going to lead to a conversation that we need to have. And I have some questions for you. So yes, we're about to dive right into it. I have what's called an exploding fire extinguisher, or a, to be more politically correct, it is an automatic fire extinguisher here in my hand. And yes, I'll admit these sound like a gimmick and they very well may be, but the price was right and I figured we'd try a couple of these out right here. I've got two different ones from two different manufacturers. I have never heard of these before. So right here behind me, I have a trash barrel full of wood from about this far down and a bunch of cardboard on top. So we're gonna start that. We're gonna let the wood catch fire. So there's gonna be coals in there and a hot burning fire. And we're gonna toss a couple of these in. They're supposed to explode like 120 decibels to be really loud to let you know if fires went off. And the whole thought of this is they're kind of heavy. They're full of that kind of ABC fire chemical, that white powder. And the explosion is supposed to, well, extinguish a flame within a certain radius as well, all while it's throwing that chemical that doesn't burn all over the fire. All right, the fire is going down in here. I have another camera up high that you should be able to see here. The wood is lit. And how these work is they're supposed to come in contact with a flame for about three to five seconds, they claim and then something on the inside blows up and throws that powder everywhere. Woo, it flames all over the place. All right, here we go. Holy smokes, that was loud. <laughs> Woo, that was loud. So the bad news, well, the fire is still burning. And I didn't see as much powder as I was expecting either. Let's try the other one. Okay, well, since we didn't extinguish the fire there with that brand, I am doubtful this one will, being that I think they're very similar. But this one's from a company called BEG. Again, also bought off of Amazon. So I'm gonna throw one of these in right here and let's see if maybe this one does a little bit better job. Whew, that last one was kind of loud. All right, here we go. Hey, now we're talking. Look at that. All right, I don't want to breathe that stuff. A ton more powder. So that actually did knock the fire out for quite a few seconds, but it is hard. It is really hard to knock a fire out that's got coals and wood burning in there. What these are supposedly for as soon as the fire starts, if the flame touches it quick enough, it'll flash, knock the fire out before, well, wood and other things get charred and burn. It's so hard to knock out coals. As soon as the wind touches again, it ignites back. Now, I can tell you there was a huge difference. Maybe they aren't exactly the same. That one dumped a ton of powder and actually did a decent job. But, well, the fire's lit again, so I can't say that I trust these. All right, so what was this conversation all about? Well, it's about these big lithium batteries that I'm adding in my solar equipment room right here. So I'm currently moving things around, disregard the wires. Everything's very temporary at the moment. And I'm about to install another very large five kilowatt hour battery right here. And eventually I'm gonna have another one here and here for 20 kilowatt hours of capacity. I may even move up to 30 because I have the room to do that. So I've had a lot of viewers say, hey, aren't you concerned about lithium battery fires? We've all heard about them in the news over all the many, many years that they've been out, especially back in the day when they first started putting them in phones and other things. We would always see the news and things where people's phones were literally catching on fire in their pockets and it was just a big concern and a big problem. So this led me to do a little bit of research. I started digging into are lithium batteries as flammable, as explosive, or do they cause runaway to where they just have a chemical reaction and take off causing a flame and just completely run away and continue to burn. Are they as bad as people think they are? So shockingly, I found some information. I started really looking at some firefighter tests and a bunch of other stuff I found on the internet. But probably the most in-depth data and report that I found was from the FAA. 
and my goodness you can probably trust them better than just about anybody for something like this because they're determining are batteries like this and different types of lithium different types of batteries in general safe to fly on airplanes the last thing you'd want is well a big lithium battery to catch on fire on an airplane you're talking catastrophic problems here potentially so i'm going to put a link down in the description you can go read this report if you're a data nut like me i love seeing data but long story short the faa did a whole slew of tests i watched a bunch of firefighter tests on youtube um, of different types of lithium batteries and the new lithium iron phosphate batteries apparently have a new chemical technology well that's why they're labeled and called differently that is much safer than the older counterparts the old chemical technology standard lithium batteries those are the ones that apparently used to give everybody problems where if they were punctured or got salt water on them or overcharged was the biggest thing if you have a malfunction of a charger well they can potentially run away from you and catch fire and let me tell you something a chemical fire is no joke you can't really put it out with things like what you just seen even standard fire extinguishers reason being well the chemical doesn't even really need a lot of oxygen and other things in order to burn it doesn't actually need it at all so chemical fires can be very dangerous but at the end of that report what the faa said out of all their battery types tested there's a bunch of them in that report the lithium iron phosphate they considered a relatively safe battery and of the least concerned of all tested so that put me at ease what i was originally looking at getting <laughs> found one on amazon and some other places is a bottle about this size right here this is not a very big fire extinguisher with an automatic fire nozzle on top that senses temperature and heat and goes off. And guess what? They're about $800 versus this, which I can get at Costco for about $30. An insane markup just to have an automatic dispensing top on this. I mean, just, just crazy markup. After reading the report, I'm not so sure that I need all this automatic fire extinguishing in here as safe as these batteries sound. So another thing people need to realize, not only are these verters smart, they have built-in parameters and you can change them yourself to not overcharge these batteries, which is one of the big things you don't wanna do. But if you buy good quality batteries, like this Orient Power one right here, well, they have a battery management system built in. So it cuts it off for too low of a temperature that could damage it, too high of a temperature, too low of charging, uh, too low of discharge, too high of charging, which again, is the big kind of critical one here. So you have redundancy. Long story short, I've had a ton of viewers ask, what am I doing for fire safety in here? And to be honest with you, I think we're about to put one of these on wall fire extinguishers. I'm trying to make my mind up if I'm gonna put some of these fire extinguisher balls in the room, because at least if there was a fire out here, I would hear the explosion and know something's going on. They did actually knock the fire out, although it was only for a few seconds. So one other big thing, this is where I wanna pick your brain because a lot of y'all are watching my solar series and you have, well, more information than me. But after reading these reports, seeing how safe lithium iron phosphate batteries are, I just can't personally justify the huge expensive, I'm talking few thousand dollar automatic fire extinguishing systems from here that have large bottles that'll run more than, well, just a few seconds. So the other thing that I was thinking of, this is pretty significant cost as well, was building a on the wall steel cabinet right here, actually to go from the floor, but mount to the wall as well, that can hold at least four of these batteries. I was gonna order two sheets of steel, actually make my own fire cabinet, but there's a lot of time and a pretty good bit of money involved in that as well. And I'm just not so sure it's worth it after these reports that I've been reading and watching. And if you wanna get a commercial grade fireproof cabinet, well, they're actually thinner than the steel I was gonna build mine out of, and they would be about 16 to $1,700 for a good quality one that would go from floor to ceiling in this space and to give me the width that I would need to fit four of these style batteries right here. Again, significant cost. All right, so while these did not completely earn my trust today, I decided to put them up. Heck, I've got them. Like I said, they messed up on my order and sent me several extras anyways. And the one thing I think I do like about them is, first of all, they don't explode till you get to a really hot temperature. So I'm not concerned about the heat of the unit making them go off, but the noise they make, I think that's important to me. That was loud enough that if one of these blew up right here, I still think I could hear it in the house or if I'm somewhere else on the property. And this is basically almost like a fire alarm ringing out. And probably the smartest choice of all, stick with your standard five or 10 pound 
fire extinguisher. I'm probably going to get one twice this size for this room. All right, so this was just a quick little episode I thought I'd throw out while I'm continuing to work in the background. I have another battery behind y'all that's about to go on the wall. A lot more wiring to do. Another inverter sitting on the corner. So we're about to go up to 240 volt split phase solar power out here in the shop. That video will be out here very soon. And please give me some feedback on some options I'm not thinking about that may be a little more affordable to, well, fireproof the room. I know some people are gonna say sheetrock and put certain materials on the wall. While yes, that's probably a really good choice. Again, when a battery fire kind of takes off, the wood doors and wood frame and things that you can't protect, I'm afraid the room's gonna go up anyways. But again, these batteries seem so safe. I'm no longer convinced the major risk is there for these new style batteries. Catch you on the next episode.